What's up plant lovers, Devin is here, and it's been a while since we've done a house plant tour, um, pr probably like eight or nine months. There's been a lot of changes in our home, more plants have been added, things have been growing. So I wanted to do a video update showing you guys all of the different uh, house plants and the jungle energy that we've been curating in our home. Now this is gonna be a shorter video than my other house plant tours. Those ones were like 45 minutes or so, and I gave uh, some good details about every single plant in my home. Today is gonna be more of a general kind of, let's take a look at see how things have been growing and um, <clears throat> evolving rather than getting in the nitty gritty. If you wanna see those more detailed videos, which include the majority of the plants we're gonna be seeing today, check out the video description below and I'll leave a couple links down there for those houseplant tours. But anyways, let's start here in my houseplant jungle office you can see this place has been getting pretty jungly over the last few months. Last summer, we added in these gorgeous slats onto the wall so that my, house, so that my climbers would have some structure to climb up. And the other day, I just spent a few minutes, um, actually all of my mini monstera had started to reach the ceiling, so I brought it all down and I basically started going back and forth and back and forth so now you can see it's much more lush over here. And I've gotta say, I'm really thrilled at how my bookshelf has been going. Um, this guy is just constantly evolving. And uh, right now, well this, our uh, Anthurium vitrifolium is always going to be, I hope so, is gonna be like the, uh, the foundational plant of this bookshelf. And then a few months ago, I added in one of these great mother, uh, it's called a grow light by mother. And it's this incredible grow light which has has all of my succulents looking absolutely fantastic. And um, right now some of my orchids are in bloom. I really just have this bookshelf stuffed full of different plants. And you can see that the way that I go about doing this is I try to find plants that really kind of harness these corners really well and allow them to overflow over the edges of those corners. And utilizing all of our different grow lights has been, uh, you know, it's a constant learning curve. We're constantly trying to figure out how to use our grow lights more effectively so that all of our house plants, house plants can be even more happy. And I'm, right now, you know, I still have these like paddle things that are uh, pretty decent actually. Um, I like them because they will kind of give a nice little bout of light to wherever I have them. And that really allows me to keep some of these house plants in this bookshelf looking good even though they're pretty far away from the window and would not get hardly any natural light otherwise. Now one plant that I have been growing over the last like six months or so, which I never thought about growing indoors before, was um, coleus and it's turned out to be one of my favorite house plants inside obviously because they propagate so quickly but they just have such a beautiful burst of color and i have a bunch of them growing all around my home right now um, i actually have a pretty nice in-depth video you can check the link right here if you want to learn more about growing coleus as a house plant as well as a couple different ways to propagate these babies now as we move further towards this window back here, you can see the way that I really try to grow all my plants is I really like to have these different layers um, stacked up and down and up and down. And it really, comp and it really has been um, accomplished by just using random things that I can find to kind of give some height to some plants underneath the pots. I'm constantly switching them. I'm constantly switching out what goes underneath them. You know, you guys know that I build a lot of the furniture for my house plants as well. So that's the other way that I really kind of am able to uh, create this different heights of flowing energy of house plant life all over the place. Now you can see back here my Raphidophora uh, dragon's tail, Raphidophora uh, discursive a dragon's tail. Before I know it, it's going to fill out this entire wall with this huge dragon tail foliage, which is one is turning out to be one of my favorite plants in my home. A couple of my more recent introductions into this room are these floating shelves I put up. I basically just uh, took a dowel rod, connected it to a two by four, found a stud in the wall, and got this stud drilled into, or got this two by four drilled into that stud so that it could hold the weight of a floating shelf. And this, is, this has allowed me to utilize this window a little bit better a nice place for a hanging plant like this fishbone cactus right here. And I think it's just it adds just one more element. You know, I'm really aiming to fill this entire home uh, with plants everywhere I possibly can. And as you can see back here, my Monstera Peru, or my Peru Monstera is also just starting to climb back and forth and back 
back and forth and back and forth. It's pretty fun. This is another one of my, uh, this is one of my oldest plants I have here. It's gotta be like probably six years old that I started, um, you know, back when I was living in Seattle and I brought it here with me and uh, I've chopped it back many times and it's just so robust. And it's growing with my inch plant here. And this inch plant, uh, this is the Tradescantia pallida, it is just taking over, overflowing so well out of this container and really filling the view of, uh, of this window back here. In here, I have my little jewel box, Phalaenopsis, that is blooming right now. So cute, so beautiful. A lot of my orchids are blooming right now, which is so fun. And then back here in this corner is my starfire lily, my Scadoxis, I can't remember, Scadoxis something. This has been one of my favorite house plants that I started. I didn't think it would be such an incredible house plant. I grew it for the like the, the fireball like flowers um, that bloom in the summertime, but then this foliage has just retained itself, looking so gorgeous over the winter time. Super jungly vibe that it's got going on. And then over here, you can see my gorgeous Clivia is just starting to bloom right now. Um, this guy took me a couple years to really figure out how to encourage it to flower, and I just finished making a video on how to grow and uh, get your Clivias to bloom, so check that video out as well if you are growing one. Um, here you can see my other floating shelf. I have another Epiphyllum cactus and a little uh, philodendron starter that I just got going on over here. And next to it, you can see my Meyer lemon is also in bloom right now. Um, we're not far away from the uh, time where I can push it back outside, which I'm excited for, but it is bringing this nice fragrance of jasmine and gardenia into my office. Um, you know, if you're able to have one plant that has uh, fragrance inside your home, um, at any time during the year, that's always a huge plus. And for me right now, my Meyer lemon is doing the trick. And here you can see my other, another orchid of mine it has been blooming beautifully, so nice. And my little rosemary Christmas tree that I bought just to see if I could keep it alive over the winter, it's still growing and it's still looking fine. Um, it's put on almost like zero growth over the last four months, but who cares? So yeah, one of the best things that you can start to do if you're really trying to increase more plant life in your home is to put lighting underneath tables and then put plants there. Um, so that's, I pretty much have that all over the place. Um, you'll see as we continue this tour. And under here, I have my adenium that have been overwintering inside and they just started to produce some nice new foliage, which I'm actually really surprised that they did. You can see it's super cute and um, I can't wait to get these outside to get them to bloom, see what colors they are, I can't remember. And also when you have plants just kind of like all over the place, it really does help to minimize the impact of, the visual impact of cords. So I have cords back there, but you really can't see them because I have my adenium blocking them. Now you can see back in this corner um, is one of the pieces of furniture that I built specifically for my house plants. I have this like weird little kind of corner nook. Uh, it gets good. It gets really great light because it's next to this glass door. And so I built this specifically. Uh, I took the dimensions, built this specifically for this little nook to put my house plants in. And it, it's awesome. It really holds this corner nicely. And I have you know like a almost you know half a dozen, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven eight plants growing on it. There's just more plants to fill our lives. Um, check this guy out. This guy's looking good. This was a little uh, rickrack fishbone cactus I started not long ago and it has just taken off. This is getting so big and strong and in, uh, in this little container that my sister gave me, I think this is kind of fun. And here you can see another gorgeous coleus just really holding it down over here in this corner, bringing so much color. It's so hard to find house plants with lots of color, and that's why I really started to grow more and more coleus. That pretty much does it for this office. Let's go into our living room and see the updates in there. So my wife is the queen of rearranging. I swear we are rearranging furniture all the time, but it makes me happy because um, it allows me to change the placement of a lot of my different plants. And so we're, we're really like figuring out new ways to display our plants all the time. Back here in this corner, we have this cheap little Ikea piece of furniture that we got and you know we have a lot of, we love Ikea because it is inexpensive and we're always working on a budget. We do a lot of the work, you know, I build a lot of the furniture, we do all the painting, um, you know, we, we try to really live, live uh, within our means and um, so we go to Ikea all the time. 
And um, thankfully I get a lot of plants for free or else that would be another uh, topic. But here you can see my dragons, uh, what is it called? Dragons, begonia, dragon something or other. And um, this has been one of my favorite house plants to watch because as we rearrange all the time, it really just kind of, uh, comports itself wherever we put it. We've put it under uh, shelving, we've put it like, on, you know, anywhere, and it really just finds a way to kind of like grow wherever. So I've been, oh, dragon wing, that's what it's called, begonia dragon wing. And I also have a video on this guy as well, um, because I just absolutely love it. It's just a really robust plant, and I'm surprised how well it does inside the home. But, so of course, any place in the home where we have windows that are nice and bright, we have plants by them. That's, you know, an obvious. And then where we don't have windows, such as, such as over here, um, we always use LED light bulbs so that we're very low energy uh, footprint, both for, you know, environmental reasons and cost reasons. LEDs really use very little energy and provide a nice brightness for plants. Of course, you have to pick the right plants. Um, you know, this would not be a good situation for uh, like a succulent, but for a ponytail palm, this is enough brightness to keep it happy. So, you know, most of the lights in my home, like all of the lights in my office are on um, timers, 12 hour timers, 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Um, this one we turn on every day just because we have to, but using timers around the home saves you so much time and really makes your house plans happier. And then you can see as we've moved into, into this big window over here, um, this guy, this huge uh, Pachira Aquatica money tree has been here for a long time because this is just such a great spot. It is growing huge. The leaves are enormous and it's just so happy here. So we have this nice like elevator style planting scheme with our fiddly fig right here. This is the uh, Bambino, the diminutive version. Um, another anthurium, some amaryllis. We have amaryllis everywhere. And it just kind of flows nicely, allowing the, uh, the sun's rays to kind of touch everything at the same time. And then back here, you know, one of the best plants that you can grow um, for a nice, elegant look is a lot of the different palms. This is a, a Ravenia rivularis, a majesty palm, and it is majestic. It really holds this corner down well. And you know, it's so important to have a mixture. So many of us have a lot of small house plants. It's in, so essential to have a mixture of sizes. And um, the, the difficult part is, yes, if you're growing your own plants, it can take a long time, but you can find good places to buy plants cheap. This palm, Ikea, $15 for a full-size plant like this, incredible. So if you can include some larger size plants, maybe it means you have to take some of your smaller ones out of a room to fit a larger one. It will improve the energy of your spaces by having some large plants um, scattered about, I promise you. And then here's another nice little fun piece of furniture that I made. Um, you know, I'm always making these double stack pieces of furniture and when you are, if you are gonna make some double stacks, always give enough height, enough space in this middle shelf. That's, that's really the problem when you go shopping for furniture for, for house plants, um, is like if you're just buying generic furniture, there's, their shelving is always too close and it doesn't fit plants. Um, so this one is like, I, I think it's like 18 inches or 24 inches, I can't remember. But it's enough space so I can grow things like some of our wandering dudes, um, our inch plants. And um, on top, you know, it has a nice, a couple of nice plants. We really try, you know, my office, I stuff plants together because I want to create that real stuffed energy. In the rest of our home, we have more restraint. Um, we try to create a more, um, I, don't, I would say like visual appeal that's not so jam-packed and so having restraint uh, by only putting two plants here instead of you know trying to stuff it as many plants as possible also helps keep a nice clean energy and that's something that my wife has been teaching me um, because my my natural instinct is to stuff plants here and there and everywhere in between she's like no Devin we'll put more plants in more places but fewer plants in each place and it really is true and another thing about that is that like I can look anywhere in my home and see some sort of plant life, either flowers or uh, a plant. And it's like, that's really one of my biggest, one of our biggest objectives is to look anywhere and see a plant. So it's, oh, there's a plant, there's, I can look three rooms that way and I can see a plant. And that's really fun. That's what it's all about. All right, so now let's move into our kitchen. 
So moving from our, from the living room to my office, to the kitchen, I like to have one plant that kind of bridges the gap. So it kind of just holds those spaces together, unifies them. And then we move into the kitchen. We have this kind of corner without any lights, any windows, anywhere, you know, there, there's no natural light hitting this area. So I, I built this cool piece of furniture. It's actually on wheels so it can move around. And then I put um, some grow lights underneath it. So now I can put some nice plant material right here and these guys will be happy and it adds more plants to the mix. And of course back here we have our big mama monstera. This is also probably, I think, only four years old and I started this from like a little like four inch plant and look how huge it is. So if you are trying to add a couple of large plants to your home, like I was suggesting, Monstera, and you wanna do so uh, inexpensively, Monstera is one of the best options because they grow so dang fast, they're so easy. And we have it just with this one little uh, single grow light. It's not even a grow light, this is just like a normal um, a floodlight that we have in this lamp and that is definitely enough light for this guy to be happy and yes we always try to add some splashes of color with roses or whatever flowers we can get our hands on cheaply and we just kind of make them last and put them all around the house as much as possible so now let's move into my second office. So moving into my second office, the way that I decided I wanted to get plant life in this corner was to, I put up this like $10 um, bar from Ikea and put these hanging plants here and it really kind of just adds a nice kind of floating energy here. Uh, just one more way to add some more plant life to an extra corner of your home. Hanging plants, you know, you really have to figure out the thing about studs um, finding studs in order to hang plants effectively without ruining your walls. But once you do, it will change your life if you're trying to increase the amount of plants. So over here, you can see this is my amaryllis Christmas tree. This was such a fun project. Um, I love amaryllis. It is by far my favorite flower. And so I created this Christmas tree to house my amaryllis. Right now they're kind of moving into their second flowering stage. And um, it's a plant that I will always have because they're so easy and the flowers just are incredible. So I created this Christmas tree, put it by this bright sunny window and they are doing fantastic. I'm getting my, my second or third flush of flowers right here, right now. And then back here in this corner, I keep like all of my extra pots and all this kind of stuff, things on hand, my systemic houseplant insect control, for instance. And I call it my second office because this is where I like put my plants together. And um, it's also where I have my little propagation station, um, which is essential for any houseplant lover. Um, every houseplant lover should have a little propagation station set up and it should be full at all times, just like mine. And that's pretty much it for my office number two. Let's go to our new project that we just finished yesterday, which was the impetus for this video. We just finished this great um, installation, this cool design in our front room. So let's go take a look. All right, so here we are in the front room. Let's say hi to my wife. This is Samantha. Hi. And she was the brains behind this project, which looks insane. So we. This used to just be a blank slate, blank wall, and she had the awesome idea first to put up the mirrors. And then we put up this uh, like crown molding along the edges, did it all ourselves. And then I built this from scratch, this cool uh, piece of furniture to house a few of our house plants. And it's so elegant, it, but it's, it's elegant, but you know, full of life. It just really kind of unites the energies of our homes um, with this front room. This is right by our front door. And it really does, because it's on the north side of our home, it really doesn't get very much good sunlight. So we had to come up with something ingenious to house a few house plants um, and make some, some more mother natural energy here in this area. So this is what we did. And I think it looks absolutely stunning. So I gotta give, Big props to my wife for her awesome designs throughout the home. If you love this, please leave a comment so we can fill her with some wonderful uh, encouragement. And then in areas where we really don't have any good lighting at all, the way that we like to fill it with um, color and life is yes, of course, little vases of flowers like these, and also propagations. Propagations do not require a lot of lighting. What they do require is um, warmth, and that's really the key, so we have this Dracaena propagating here, as well as a Syngonium. And um, you know, it just adds a little bit of green touch to areas around the home where it's too hard to grow any plants. So let's just take a quick trip to the bathroom. And similarly, 
in a bathroom. You can also add some fresh flowers, of course. My parents are visiting us this weekend, so we wanted to have a couple different uh, pieces of flower material in their bathroom. And here you can see another coleus. Just get a nice bright brightness from this window right here. Bathrooms can have plants, but you have to have a window for them to actually grow and be happy. Before we move upstairs, let's take a look in our laundry room. Just because it's a laundry room doesn't mean it can't be beautiful. So what we did was we built this shelving unit. We sure have built a lot of stuff around here. We built this thing to hide the uh, like the gross cables and tubes and stuff behind the laundry machines. And then of course we added plants on top. Some pretty low light lovers like uh, some snake plants and our spider plants and they're doing fine and they're actually really happy and they make the laundry room almost fun to do laundry in. Now let's go upstairs. So another fun project that we did was this, we call it the bonus room. It used to be a bedroom and we hired some people to knock down this wall so it would be nice and open and airy. So down here is our front room that we were just looking at. Come up these stairs and then you're greeted by this beautiful bonus room. And the way that we're harnessing this space with some plant material is we have this beautiful um, philodendron that's just kind of climbing and overflowing. This is a really low light philodendron that is just kind of sprawling over the place here. And then back here is we have this beautiful big mama epiphyllum. This is, um, this is a queen of the night epiphyllum hookeri. And this is also another plant that's been in our family for like 20 years. And just another opportunity for you to see how important it is to have large plants in your home. This guy really fills out this corner. Imagine if we had like four or five like small plants would not have the same energy as having this beautiful big guy. And we just, you know, another coleus, another snake plant. So, and last but not least is our bedroom just over here. And so here we are in our bedroom and back here in this nice big blue wall, you can see that was the first time that we did that crown molding, um, which, you know, we've done all of this with like a $50 hand saw that I bought on Amazon and I just do it all. You just got to do a little bit of math to really kind of get all your dimensions correct. And it's really not that hard. And it looks like a million bucks. We did it for like, a hundred bucks and you know over the course of a couple days this is really not hard to do and it really adds a nice chicness to our bedroom um, but a couple plants that we do have in here gorgeous clivia now this guy's not blooming but he's like 10 feet away from the window and he is just thriving he's chilling he's doing his thing he looks so stunning and i think he found his forever spot right here and then back here in this corner you can see this gorgeous Chefalera. I got this at a plant swap at a local garden center recently, super fun. If you've never been to a plant swap, you should definitely go. And I just changed out this container to a nice, elegant, uh, bright terracotta uh, container to allow this gorgeous uh, umbrella plant to really showcase its life and its loveliness in a nice container. If you don't have any more room for plant material, the way that you can elevate the energy in your spaces is by improving the containers, all right? So maybe, you, maybe you're totally full of plants, you don't want any more plants. Well, one at a time, you can start to buy, invest in a nice container. Yeah, this was like 75 bucks for this container, but this is a plant that's gonna live for 10, 20, 30 years, and it's gonna live in this container for probably, you know, could live here for like eight years. So and it really suits the energy of this space. So if you've get, gotten to the point where you don't wanna add more plants, you start to elevate the look of the pre-existing plants that you do have can be huge. And I think we're kind of getting to the point where I don't know if we have any more room for more plants. Maybe we do, maybe we don't. Maybe, maybe you'll have to stick around and watch and wait and see. But I think that concludes our tour, our abbreviated tour of how we are utilizing house plants in our home here in uh, Chester County in Pennsylvania zone 6B. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, consider giving it a little like and don't forget subscribe to our channel. We're bringing new plant related content every single week. Thank you, thank you guys for joining me here on Plant Vibrations. I'll catch you real soon. Ciao.